La cobra media. Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your boy Black Cobra Willie, a.k.a. Big Snake, a.k.a. The Biggest Snake, and this is my beautiful co-host, Black Cobra Justine. What's going on today? What's up? Happy Doing to good? be back here. Doing good? All right. Yeah. So today... Wait, 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 before you keep going, what are you wearing? Oh, snap. <laughs> I forgot about that. If y'all can see my shirt, y'all might not be able to see what this is. <laughs> <laughs> it says, sorry I'm late. I was gobbling glizzies. I mean, this is the this is the ground ball, glizzies, glizzies and ground ball podcast. So, I mean, it only makes sense to have <laughs> a shirt on. But hey, we're glad for y'all to join us again. For everyone watching the episode, we are back with the glizzies and ground balls podcast. On today's episode, we have straight out of Georgia, yes, Campbell sir. High School, yes, sir. East Cobb Astros, <laughs> South Carolina Gamecocks. Mr. Michael Braswell. What's going on, Mike? How you doing today? Man, I'm doing good. How doing about good? y'all? Got, got you in the studio, man. Got you dripped out, man. Got a Stripped little chain. Out. Something like that. <laughs> yes. Something like that, man. Some slight. We need yeah. to do a fit yeah. check I, I, on I had Michael. To, I had to find somewhere to wear this. <laughs> I, I, I wore it, so. <laughs> had to find somewhere to wear it. So, like I said, y'all, man, we happy for y'all tuning in. We got a, we got a dope show on for y'all today. So, um, like I said, we got Mr. Michael Braswell. And, and one thing that we like to start the show off, like it's, it's like the first question I always ask, I got to know... Justine don't necessarily want to know, but the people want to know, is Michael Braswell a glizzy gobbler? Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Sheesh. we got to know, mean, man. Like, I, Put it this way. If you phrase it a different way, I'd say <laughs> yes. But, you know, I, I do enjoy me a little hot dog. Okay, so. okay. So, how, okay, so yeah. you... You would say you are a glizzy yeah, gobbler. Yeah, I'd say that, okay. yes. But yeah. not like how they probably thinking about it. You just yeah. oh, you enjoy yeah, hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. None of the inappropriate way. Yeah, of course. Okay. My man's like hot dogs. Yeah, okay. Hot okay. Dogs. If you had to choose though, would you hot dog or burger? Like if you if you if you had to go. See, there's a lot of factors going into that, okay. right? Yeah. Like a burger, like like if you have lettuce, the bacon, you know, ketchup, mustard, all the other stuff. Okay. And the pickles, then we're talking. Okay. A hot okay. dog, I mean, it's very simple. Like I'm very simplistic on my hot dogs. Like it's like ketchup and mustard. That's it? Yeah. So it's like I'd rather go for a burger because I feel like okay. it's more fulfilling of like yeah. a whole different other things. Right. So, so as you know, like I said, as you, I, I had to bring my glizzy steamer. A I've got glizzy. like eight, glizzy machine. Bro, I've got like eight glizzies in here. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna let Justine kind of ask some questions. I'm gonna whip up some glizzies so we can kind of enjoy this as we talk. All right. And so yeah, we gonna, we gonna keep it going. So let's what you got? Go, let's Sound go. Let's go. Um, okay. So Michael. We really like to get to know our guests, yeah. and I know our listeners want to get to know you too. So we like to start off doing that by doing a rapid Q&A. Okay. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Yeah. Whatever pops onto your mind, just spit that out. Okay. All right. Here so here we go. First question. What is your favorite movie? Favorite movie? I'm a big, like, superhero guy. So I'll tell you what. The, when I watched the first Avengers movie, like, when I was, like, I think it was 2012 it came out, so... It was probably, I was probably 22 now, 10 years ago, 29. I was like 10 years old, and I watched that. It was like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So definitely Avengers. Avengers, Avengers that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, team iPhone, team Android. Oh, iPhone all the way. I have all argues way. with my dad about this all the time. He talking about, he talk, He says iPhone tracks you and all the other stuff. And I'm like, man, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I think Maybe. 95, I think I think about 85, 90% of, of the U.S. uses an iPhone yeah. from my experiences. So definitely iPhone. Team iPhone, absolutely. What's your most used emoji? Emoji? Definitely the crying, laughing one, because mm -hmm. we was in the group chat the other day. Mm -hmm. It was about people. <laughs> Yeah, I was using that a lot, just, you know, cracking up and yep. stuff, so definitely that. That's a good one. Would you rather travel to the past or to the future? She, I it's a, at the time I'm at now, probably the future, okay. right? Because, I mean, would I, would I be staying there or would I be, just like, just to, visiting? Just to get a glimpse, yeah. I'd definitely go future, mm -hmm. so then I can say, okay, what decisions can I, if, whether it be good or bad, I'd go back, I'd go forward and then be like, when I go back to the present time, I'd be like, okay, what can I do to yeah. not let that happen? Yeah. I, was, I mean, we see a lot of time travel movies, so, I mean, yep. there's a whole lot of outcomes that can go, but, you know, that's just something that's I like good. to do. So. That's good. Who's your celebrity crush? Jeez. I can't really disclose that <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> you don't want to shoot your shot on the no, podcast? No, no, my girlfriend going to oh. kill me. Oh, okay. She's she okay. going to Georgia State right now. She, okay, okay. Uh, but can't it's a celebrity. Can't. She, okay. Even if it's a celebrity, she'll be. Uh, see, I don't even want to play those games. <laughs> 
Hey, my so man. I'd rather just not even play that. That's smart. Okay, that's smart. That's, hey, smart. that's, smart. that's, that's smart. a good man. That's a good so man. your girlfriend is your celebrity crush. We'll just say yeah, that. Yeah, we'll just say that. She's okay. a celebrity. Shout out Helen Abernathy. Y'all already know the vibes, man. Shout out. There you go. Yeah. Good number, answer. Number zero, answer. Georgia State. Softball. Go check her out, man. Yeah. Okay. Good answer. Who's your favorite artist? Artist like rap artist? Mm-hmm. See, when I get into this, it gets the controversy. <laughs> Guys, we like controversy. That's what we like. Yeah, I'm a big Kanye West fan. Oh, when, it comes, when, it comes, when it comes to music, right? Okay. Because in my mind, he's the greatest of all time, musical-wise. I mean, the person, you can say, like I said, I tell people, separate the man from the music. I know that's hard. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when I look at his discography, like, it's just, it, he's it's, untouchable for yeah. me. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but, like, Kanye, Kanye is probably my all-time favorite, but, like, right. Current rapper, nothing is controversial. Gunna's my favorite, like new okay. school rapper, and then yeah. you know whatever he got going on. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot so, going so on. Right I guess you could say my musical taste is very controversial, but those are my two main people: uh, Kanye West and Gunna. Okay, for real. okay, okay. Uh, what's your dream car? Dream car. See, I uh, dream. My car that I okay. There's like differences for me. There's a car. The first car I'd buy if I'd get money mm -hmm. is an AMG. Okay. Cause you know, I know y'all heard that Drake song. Yeah, I'm outside, <laughs> man, yeah, I'm back. Hey, and that's the first song I'm gonna play when I'm in that. I'm out, yeah, I'm gonna play that. And then the uh, and then Dream Car. I mean, I was like a fantasize like I'm a, if I'm Jeff Bezos tomorrow, I win the lottery, get two billion dollars. I mean, I can get a Bugatti or something like yeah, that. Okay. But okay. more realistic Dream Car is probably the AMG. The AMG. Yeah, okay. The AMG yeah. okay, I like it. Um, what are you currently watching on Netflix? Oof, so. Uh, my sister and my girlfriend got me watching Wednesday. I don't, yeah, show about the little, yeah. yeah, it's a little, it's a little child, it's a little in there, but I mean, it's entertaining, <laughs> so I like watching it. And I was watching that, and then like when it comes to Netflix, I'm more of a you know serious guy when it comes to that, like the Narcos and the, you know, I haven't watched Money Heist, but that stuff like that, like that Ozark, like I'm more into that kind of thing. Money Heist, yeah, so it's the real deal. Yeah, I'm into that stuff. So right now I'm watching Wednesday. And I'll probably check out something else when I'm done with that. But right now, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Gotta check that out. Okay, here's what I like to know from everybody. Oh, Do you God. think aliens are real? Yes. And I, 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 <laughs> Thank so you. No, 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 okay, from my perspective, it's like, okay, let's be real. If the scientists, if you believe the science, and they say there are infinite amount of universes and galaxies and all this stuff. I think it's crazy to think that we're just the lucky one out of an infinite amount of planets that I don't got so no too. life. I, I just don't feel like that's a logical thing to think. So mm -hmm. I, I feel, me personally, I'm just like, really, that's the way I judge people, really. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> do you think aliens are real? And if they say no, I'm be like, okay, do, I don't really yeah. know about that. Because, like I said, there's an infinite amount of planets and universes and galaxies and there has to be one more, like at least one. There has to be. So one of us so doesn't not, think aliens not are real, and it's I'm, not me. I'm not going to say that I don't believe in aliens. It's just, I guess when you don't see something, it's... It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. tough sometimes to be like, you know, like you were thinking like we're humans, and if I were to go to another planet, like I'm gonna see somebody else that's living, like you know, oh, yeah, like, I guess it's tough to. It's hard to fathom. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying. I, 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 but I'm like y'all, like I, I do agree that there's too much world out here mm -hmm. so for it not to be. It's just tough to be like, like what do they, what do they look like? like well, yeah, because yeah, that's the thing. Like it's like, well, it's a thing where we're are we ever gonna see an alien in our lifetimes? Definitely not. But it's like a thing that you have to believe it or whether you believe in it or not. And like for me I, personally, I just logic. I just believe that. It's know? like, are they like Avatar? Like, is it like the Probably. Avatar people running around? Yeah, I just watched that too. That was an amazing movie. I just good? watched that. Okay. And uh, but like Avatar, it's a great movie. But I don't know if we got some people on Pandora, the blue people, <laughs> right? Out here, the blue people, you know, flying on magical beasts, yeah, that's going what's, in like, water I, and stuff. I, think aliens, I don't know if we like, got any. Of those that's, what I, that's what I think about. Like, are they are they riding on like dragons and like like what are they doing? Are they robots? Like, I, mean, I, I just think like there's a whole lot of things. They're probably planet. watching us right now. Like, there's an infinite amount of things that could be like. <laughs> Depends on the climate of your planet. Yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of scientific Darwinism. A whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. We, that, so, that, that's a deep conversation right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 It's I a pretty deep podcast for glizzies and ground balls. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's a baseball podcast. We better about, we about start talking about aliens. And, yeah. That could be. I love yeah. it. All right. What you got? What All you right. Got? Last rapid fire question. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Oh, Chick-fil-A. Yes. 100 out of 100. Don't fail. They never miss. P customer service on 10. Yep. I mean, it's just, you can't go wrong. I mean, if you, what else would you really pick other than Chick-fil-A? I can't really, right. what you picking, McDonald's? I mean, come on. <laughs> 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 like, it's Chick-fil-A. Like, it's the gold standard, especially it in the is. South. It's the gold standard. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I'll say this. I've, I've ran into some people lately that, like, despise Chick-fil-A. Like they hate the chicken sandwiches. They say it's too big. I'm like, yo, where? Like, and those are people I do not associate myself. Yeah, like Chick Fil A is goaded. You know what I'm 
know what I'm saying? So, so you walk in the Chick Fil A, like, what's your order? What, what, what you ordering? I mean, depends on what I'm feeling. Okay. Like when I was a kid, I was you know the twelve count okay. with, with the barbecue sauce. Actually, I just got into Polynesian sauce like For real? like three years ago. Okay, I swear, cause I've been at Golden Chick Fil A since I was a little kid, and you know, like I used to get the the twelve count nugget with the barbecue sauce and. The fries and stuff like yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then now I'm more of a chicken sandwich, okay. add the cheese on it. Got to. Maybe get the deluxe and subtract the tomatoes. <laughs> Hate tomatoes. Never would put that on anything I eat. Never would eat tomatoes. But okay. chicken sandwich with the cheese and lettuce and stuff with the fries. Okay. I'm in a good spot. Large size? You got to eat it large or you just. It depends on how I'm feeling. Because okay, okay. like, <laughs> like, there just has to be a healthy you know, component yeah. to okay. it for me because I'm like, mmm. Okay. I, I don't want to feel too. I got to work out probably afterwards. So I, I got you. Know, right. I do, I, I'm, hungry, I'm hungry a lot, so definitely large a lot of times. Yeah, I'm all I get, automatically. I'm, automatic. Don't even ask me. I want a large <laughs> drink. Yeah, light ice. With that. light ice, every time it's got to be light ice because you fill it up. Oh yeah. Get, but I don't know because I like eating the ice though, okay, and, and, the, and that Chick Fil A ice. Is good. They do have good ice. Special. <laughs> <laughs> they got the best fast food ice. In scouting terms, it, it plays up. It plays up. <laughs> it plays up. Sixty grade ice is what it is. Sixty grade. Sixty grade ice. Cool. All right, cover you got those glizzies ready. Cute, I mean, y'all see. You said you want ketchup and mustard, so yeah. I'm gonna let you. Can you hand this off? I don't want to reach. I don't yeah. wanna reach across. And then y'all can't really see mine, but there you go. You can grab it. Uh, I've got ooh. mayo on mine. I, y'all might say that's weird. I yeah. love mayo on hot dogs. I don't or know. I say glizzies. I only like mayo on my turkey sandwiches. Oh, that make it turkey sandwich. Good. Okay, I love mayo. So I mean, I, I could eat a scoop of it. Like he, Mike, he ain't even wait. Like, <laughs> bro, we ain't do the glizzy touch first. Oh, like. I know. And, um, it's so saying it was looking it's, good. Is, is it kind of good though? Like, I got it's, you, it's I juicy. Got you. I got you. Hey, we gotta do this. This is for all the glizzy gobblers out there. I got you. We gotta do our honorary glizzy touch glizzy to my man, Mister Braswell. That's the touch right there. I'm gonna get a bite. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's. A, <laughs> is it good? I'm not gonna lie Without to you. It. That's a good glizzy. Without I like that. Okay, so. I don't want to talk my mouthful. Just name. Yeah, something. yeah. Okay. I think before we hop into baseball talk, let's do one more get to know you type question. All right. So we want to know, of course, this is a baseball podcast, but we appreciate all sports. We love all athletes. List your top five athletes of all time. Number one, got to be Michael Jordan. 100% bias. I don't care what you say. Number two, I'd say Lionel Messi. Yep. Him probably two. Michael Phelps at three. We're talking about straight athletes. I mean, number four, probably debatable. Tiger Woods, Barry Bonds, pick one. I don't really care. But whichever one doesn't get that fourth spot, get the fifth spot. So, okay. the yeah, is for me. Wow. Yeah. That's okay, a so good list, but. Hold on, hold on. So, we got, let's make sure. Okay. What we got? Okay. MJ, Messi, mm-hmm. Phelps, and then Tiger Woods or Barry Bonds, whichever way you want to go, four mm-hmm. or five. See, I'm going to take a wild prediction here on why you said that. What? I talked to my sister about this, too. Do you have Serena Williams on your list? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He read my Yo. mind. <laughs> Yo, I'm not going to lie to you. If you ask her what her top five list is. You want to know my top five? I want to know because I don't even like, do you, have, you got a top five? My top five, Please all do. females. Please it's do. all females? All women. Oof. Yeah, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Listen, yeah, listen, hold listen, up. listen, listen, listen. Okay. okay. I have to rep for the women on this show. Understand. I'm I'm by myself here. I got to rep for the women. I'm just like we're teaming up on you, though. You are. Okay. Right. okay. okay. <laughs> Here's my top five. Serena Williams. Okay. That's right now. Jackie joyner Kersey. You don't even know that is. <laughs> He's too young. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> don't cancel me. <laughs> hey, please don't. Okay. It's we'll, okay. We'll if you're, okay. If you're okay. young, okay. Mia Hamm. Don't cancel me part oh, two. Oh, wow. Wait, oh, hold up. I take that back. She plays soccer? Yes. Oh, okay. I got that one. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay I got Simone that one. Biles. Okay. Y'all you know just Simone Biles. Lisa Leslie. Okay. It's understandable. Okay. Is this the first one like Duncan, the WNBA or something? Yeah. Was she the first she one? Was. She was. Okay. I'm pretty sure I she mean, was. They're all goats in their sport. No. It, I, if I had to give mine, Serena definitely probably cracks it. She's, she's, she's goaded. Serena is number Five or six. She's tied fifth on his right. list. <laughs> because I'm not going to lie, I recently found, not even recently, but like a couple months ago, found out that Serena Williams played and won an open while pregnant. I did not know she's that. She's the GOAT. Oh, yeah. She is. She yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's the GOAT of women's tennis. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Completely. Okay. But I just like in my mind, like, you, I, I'm not going to put over Jordan. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I put over Messi. I mean, no. See, Even his accolades. Am I going to put over Michael Phelps? No. 
Am I gonna put him over Tiger Woods? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like so, but, but Serena could crack your top ten though. She could be no, 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 no. She's definitely in the middle of the top ten. Okay. Top like 10, I'm saying, okay. like, like she's definitely like five, six. But like over the name, that is name. Like these are like yeah. the like if you want to put Muhammad Ali on there. I mean, I mean, so, I mean are you gonna put over Muhammad Ali? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even like you talk about. Well, I mean, I mean you ain't got Tom Brady. I don't like, Wayne Gretzky, Tom Brady. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I don't disagree with y'all. I just have to advocate for the women on this show. Okay, okay. You that's understand. That's understand. You do. But realistically, are all the other four women in, would be in your top five? Like for real? Yeah, because I'll be real. <laughs> I respect. I respect that. <laughs> but let's be real. <laughs> like said, beef, uh, beef be for real. B F F R. Yeah, be, 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 be for real. Like, like, no, come no, on. no. Like, be for real. <laughs> Me and Ham is not in your top ten. <laughs> Me and Ham might not make the top ten. Me and Ham your like, top. She's not. Uh, she's top ten women for top sure. 10. I mean, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, for sure. I mean, come on. Thing is, Simone, you had me and Ham up above Simone Biles. I probably didn't put him in the right order. Okay, okay, I okay. Three names number one. You had me there. I was like, good. We're going in the right way. Had me in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. And then I hear Mia Ham is the second name. No disrespect to Mia Ham. Nah, I mean, we, <laughs> we got some soccer. I, 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 I see her on the sports center in the morning when I wake up before I go to school. You know, I see her on the no, top ten. But like I said, I mean, Simone Biles got to be top two. Female athlete. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, she's oh, yeah. she's up there with the grades. Yeah, she's little, right? She's like what five two. Yeah, she's tiny. Yeah, I mean, gymnast. She's, I mean, probably, she's probably not even five two. Yeah, really? I mean, her career ended kind of controversially, but it did. We're not gonna get into that. That was, that was tough. Yeah. It's yeah. another controversial, yeah, type topic. Okay, so so we got the list. So we yeah, got yeah. once again MJ, Messi, Phelps. And then Tiger or Barry. Tiger Barry put them. And I'm then, leaning Tiger for just because of steroids. I'll, I'll give Barry Bonds five. I give Barry. Tiger. Right. So you, Barry so, you Bonds. So, so you got Barry as your as your number one baseball guy then. Oh, of course. Who else would you have? Aaron Judge. <sighs> no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, goaded this past year, but yeah, he yeah, he I know, I know. Enough. I was just joking. I mean, yeah, I guess it's got to be Barry. I mean, Babe would be the only one, maybe, possibly. I mean, I respect Babe Ruth, but I mean. He don't have the numbers. Yeah, that Barry Bonds had. Like Barry Bonds has like six, seven MVP. Yeah, like, I mean, seven hundred sixty-seven home. Yeah. Six home people runs. just not gonna like you saying Barry Bonds though. And that's cool. <laughs> it's my list. It's my list. It's my top five. It's my list. Like it's like <laughs> okay, how are you gonna tell me how to put my list? Like, like it. it's okay. my preferences. You know. So Barry at five, and then six would be Serena. Possibly, yeah, yeah more than likely. You saying both going going getting there get somewhere? Some athletes getting there. there somewhere. Tom Brady gonna get in there somewhere. I know okay. my my South Carolina teammates gonna hate me for that. Tom Brady not being in the top five, okay, but he's definitely in the top ten though. But yeah, he's, for he's sure. not above any of those names I just named. So. Okay. I like it. Okay, so that's Braswell's top five. We did the Glizzy Touch. Got the little Q and A. Got to know him a little bit. So, like I said, with this being a a baseball podcast, we obviously want to talk about sports, but you know, we we want to keep some stuff centered around baseball. Um, I just want to hop into some, you know, like the, the the Michael Braswell story almost. So first question we kind of got for you is, you know, everyone kind of starts at an early age. So just kind of talk to us about when did you start playing and how to, you know, your your younger days of like playing baseball. All right. So I'll tell you all the story of Brazzy or Michael Braswell, right. as you know it. So three years old, I pick up a baseball. Uh, my pops, my pops was the coach of a little league team, uh, fit to a 10 minutes away from my house, Lions Park. Um, played there for like six, well, I don't even know how long really, until, until I was probably like seven, eight years old, you know, playing coach pitch and all the other stuff. And then I got picked up by this travel team called the uh, Atlanta Angels, right? At the time, like we were like, that team was like one of the best teams you could have, like like in the country. Like we, we traveled at like nine, year, eight years old, we were traveling across the country type thing. Right. Like, I mean, Rob Gordon was on that team. Okay, yeah, me, Rob, yeah. Uh, Rob Corbin, maybe a lot of D one guys that are on that team. Okay. John Paul Wheat was on that yeah. team. He goes, mm-hmm. he's uh, he's for the Cubs. He's playing for the Cubs right now in the minor league org. Okay. Um, uh, we had a lot of people on the team. It's kind of we have some guys at Tech. We have Damian a truck, Damian Whitfield. He's at Texas State right now. Okay. And they're their top twenty five team. Like okay. we had a lot of guys on that team at eight years old. Yeah. Were, like really good. All with, yeah. We had our head coach Curtis George. You know, coach for Team Halo. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Brought a lot of kids up. Great guy, great coach. Shout out him, and um, and then coming up, uh, we played for Atlanta Angels. We were like a, like the best team in the Southeast for like a smooth probably three four years. Okay, and then after that, uh, we kind of went separate ways. Like Atlanta just kind of broke up. One went into Team Halo. One went to Atlanta Angels. Still Atlanta Angels, right? Gotcha. So of that group, Team Halo, I'd say 
in retrospect, right? No disrespect to anybody, but in retrospect, Team Halo is probably the better version of the split. I'd probably say, like, yeah. we probably we probably had the more Division One drafted kids. Like, I mean, I, I think in our history of Halo, we had uh, Bubba Chandler. Yep, was good. Me, uh, Rob Gordon was on there for a little while. Uh, Ryan Spikes played on us. Okay, Ryan yeah, Spikes played. Spikes. Us, yeah. Oh, yeah, he played us for like a. Yeah. It wasn't that long though, but it was, it was, okay. it was a little bit though. He still been on team. Uh, Hunter Elliott was on our team for a little yeah. bit. He just he was won the College World Series with Ole Miss and started I think the championship game. Okay, for them. Yeah. Um, uh, we have three guys that played for us at one point that are at Texas State right now. Dalen Pena, name in Whitfield. Just name off a few names. John yeah. Weed, like, and remember this is all like a we're not an organization. This is like a. Like a group of guys that we played together from seven all the way up to like 16, 17. Tamar okay. joined the team. Okay. Like, it's funny. Tamar joined it before anybody really knew who he was. Who like, was, okay. like, real talk, like, like Tamar was him. Like, oh, like, even like, back then? Like, 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 like at 12, I, I told my dad, I was like, dude, this dude. <laughs> he was like that? Okay. Like, bro, this man, like, Lil, Lil like, I'm, I'm like, he's like 12, 13 years old. Like, I'm like, who is this dude in the cage? Because yeah. we had Travell on our team at the time. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And Travell, you know, he's at Arizona State, he was at uh-huh. Georgia Tech. And then, so, he was like, yeah, my little brother came in, uh, you know, we all hit together. Ooh. I'm like, all right, we're at D-Bats. Mm-hmm. Now I see Tamari, and I'm like, Lord, have mercy. So, so, he, so, he always had that hit tool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord, cause it was crazy, because it, it was first, like, you got the PG scene, like, mm-hmm. not to get too much of Tamari here, but probably, you know, but, like, not to PG team, but, like, he was more known more for his glove. Yeah. And yeah. everybody, in the, like, on, like, the, on, like, the, Perfect game websites stuff like that, and then we're just looking like, dude, you know this dude got a stick. He got a stick. <laughs> he got a stick. Yeah. But yeah, but enough of that. But like, you know, we had a lot of great, great, great players on Halo, and then I then we came up. You know, I wasn't playing shortstop there. I, I, me and Bubba Chandler. You know, we had like we were competing for that kind of spot. I didn't really stick at the short at the position until I was like 14, 15 years old, like just okay. starting high school, and then. Cause like people don't know this, but I mean, I'm probably or was one of the slowest probably shortstops in the country. Like, I think I like ninth in like eighth or ninth grade, I ran like a seven nine six. Seven, and it was yeah, like, that's, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, not at all. <laughs> like I mean, I'm running slower than first baseman at that point. Yeah, but it's, so it's like, so yeah, and all my friends know that. Man. You know, I'm slow, but it is what it is. But and then so then I grew up, you know, growth spurt. So then I committed to Carolina. Um. My beginning of my sophomore, like the fall of my sophomore year, okay. beginning of my sophomore year. So, like you know, I had held the school. I had whole I, my top options were Vanderbilt, Carolina. I mean, UGA had offered me as a okay. PO. Funny, but yeah, I was a PO at the time. I, I, forgot, was, I forgot, I forgot you too. <laughs> yeah, I was no, yeah, I was known more as a pitcher back then. For real, um, a hitter. Even, even 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 at Campbell. At the beginning, yes, I was okay. like you can ask okay. you can ask Lawrence and all them. Like, I was a pitcher, uh-huh. like 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 I, I was like pitching my butt off back then, okay. like okay. for real. And then so then I just developed and grew, and then you know uh, then COVID happened, and that's when I really took the next step as a defender at gotcha. short, right? As a hitter as well, but more hitters too. And like but then the COVID happened, right? So Team Halo, like you know, we had a our coach had COVID, all that stuff. So we didn't play summer ball that year. So I happened to pick up for the East Cobb Astros. Gotcha. Right, and then stories told on that one. But okay. you know, went to the Stros. Uh, we had a pretty loaded team. I was competing with Christian Campbell at shortstop. Yep. You know, to play there, and then you know we had a little rotation going and everything like that. And uh, you know. Had a great time. Probably, probably one of the best times I've had playing For baseballs real? with these Cabastros. I mean, we were, it's funny because that was like, I think we were the first like all like we almost had an all black team. Okay, like, with, like with, the, with the Astros or when yeah with the Astros, no, with the Astros, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. with the Halo too. But we all we had an all black team. With so the was, was Kevin coaching all or Gary? Uh, or Kevin. Kevin was coaching. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Kevin, and then so like it was like there was a time literally where we had every player on the field was black, even our catcher. It's and, pretty and, and we were and we were dominating folks. Yeah. Like we were killing folks. Like people people don't understand how much talent comes out of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Well not, well, not even Atlanta, just Georgia. I mean, obviously Atlanta Metro, but like Georgia. And I probably say this, I say this live, like Georgia's got the best baseball talent. Would you agree with that? Or, or I'd say I mean, it, it, there's different levels to it, right? Because okay. from my like, I, I've played a lot of people, like especially in college baseball, you see people from different areas, areas of the state. Like it's different. Like Georgia's more athletes. Mm-hmm. Georgia's more like. Powered like tools and everything. Yeah. Then you go to places like Southern Cal, right? The, I would say they have the best baseball players, not from like an overall baseball, but like like know how to play the game. Gotcha. Okay. Like like they're just solid. Like 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 the demographics have different things, right? Like 
Southern Florida, flashy ball. They, they, they're all, like, flashy, you know, Hispanic a lot of the time. Like, yeah. especially Southern Florida, you know, flashy, you know, they, they know how to, you know, pit for power, all that other stuff, right? Southern California is more of the gritty baller dudes. Like, yeah. the, the gritty, like the, like, I don't know if you can call it baseball, but the Rock Riggios of the world, okay, like, yeah. Southern California. Like, like yeah. not crazy tools, but they just, they just, grew, they're great players because they know how to play the game. Yeah. They, like, they can really do stuff well on the baseball field. Okay. And then, like, Texas and Louisiana, I hate playing Louisiana teams. They just piss me <laughs> off. But, <laughs> like, because they, they're just, they're just, they can hit. Yeah. They just hit. They don't do anything else. They just hit. They don't play yeah. defense, they don't do none of that. They just hit. And score eight runs a game. Yeah, but, runs. They, I'm telling you what they do every time. They put a little lefty on the mound. Like those, they put a little crafty lefty on the mound, and they just score eight, nine runs every time. And you're just like, dang. Wow. Cool. And Texas is kind of the same way, but like, it's Texas. I mean, there's not really a demographic really for Texas players. They're, they're like, they're a mix of Georgia and in California. Like, okay. They know how to play baseball, and they're toolsy. Yeah. It's like, you know. okay. So like, yeah, I'd say like Georgia has the best athletes, like the yeah. best like toolsy players. Like, look like at last year's draft. I mean, what Drew. Mar, Drew, Mar, let's go! Let's like, go. like all these dudes got tools. Like, these dudes are physical monsters. Like Cam Collier is a physical monster. Yeah. So like um, guys like that, like we're known for having athletes. Yeah. You know, so okay. there we go. Cool, yeah. cool. All right, so talk to me a little bit about um obviously, and he, here's a crazy thing. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit off script. Do you remember? So I'm a baseball umpire. Do you remember when I umpired your game against North Cobb? That was you. That, yeah. <laughs> remember well, the game? It, well, it went well, to extra innings. Was it at North Cobb? Yeah, at North yeah. Cobb. And remember my, my plate partner, uh -huh. I don't know if you remember that game, but like the fans were on him so hard. And I think, I don't know if y'all were up. I I think y'all were up or North Cobb was up, but the game ended up going to extra innings. Yeah. And I, had it was, that it was a, I had that double. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think you came to pitch. I think you closed that, I think you pitched in that game too. Yeah, I closed it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so obviously like you went to Campbell High School. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about just and I'm always intrigued to know like the recruitment process because you know I played ball back in 07, so it was a lot different back then. Yeah. I graduated high school, so like obviously you mentioned like Vanderbilt, Georgia was was South Carolina kind of your dream school or was it just like how, how did it how did all that kind of kind of kind of come to be? Well, no, it was not my dream school. My dream okay. school was, was LSU growing okay. up, but then my parents said you ain't going to that. <laughs> so no bad news. Like, can't do nothing about that. Okay, I was like, yeah, it's too far. Well, okay. right, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so then you know, other than that, it was Vanderbilt. Right. Gotcha. I always grew up Vanderbilt I, like you know the Vandy boys image mm -hmm. you do that so then so what happened was like my recruitment went you know Georgia offered me as a PO they were my first offer I cried when I got that offer for real I okay. cried like I was like on the phone with the coach crying <laughs> coach Daly I was crying I was like oh my god I just got an offer I was like oh my god like, but it was a PO okay so then I was like okay cool so then I keep doing stuff and I racked up offers you know I got, I got the Louisville O as a PO um like just other SECOs, like right. stuff like that, right? Yeah. And so then, then I we're trying to cross our T's, our eyes, and you know, do everything like that. So we decided, my dad's like, okay, look, let's just go to camps, uh, yeah. the campuses that the place that like you, you know, Coach Mead at the time was the recruiting coordinator at the school at uh, Carolina, and he really liked me because he was at every game, which I liked too, because like you want to go to a school that wants you, yeah. other than a school that you want. Okay, it's it very that's yeah. very important yeah. for recruits, like young kids. Like, dude, do not go to the dream school just because it's your dream school. Yeah. Go to the school that wants you because that's they're going to give you the best chance to succeed because they want you. They want you yeah. after the program. Yeah. So they're going to put you in the best decision to succeed other than a program that feels like, okay, we can throw this kid 30 and he's going to commit. Mm -hmm. Like, that. just don't, don't do that. And um, so, yeah, so then we went, we went to visit Carolina, right? And uh, I'd already visited Vandy. I'd already visited UGA, like all of this stuff, right? And... It was, I, I went there, South Carolina wasn't near my top five options oh, dang. that I wanted okay. to go to. I think my list was, like I said, Vanderbilt, of course, Vanderbilt, Florida, LSU, UNC, and I think UGA. Yeah, I don't right. know. I forget the fifth one. Okay. But, like, those were my five. So I went to Carolina. I was like, okay, yeah, let's just go see what, see what it looks like. You know, then I went there, and, the, you know, the park was beautiful. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's, like, yeah. A, it's like a minor league, like big league field. Like it's like the way it's positioned is different than a college field. It's literally like a big league park. Okay. And then the campus was great. Like it's in the city. I love the city. You know, distance from home was good because I'm like, I don't want to be too close, but I don't want to be too far at the same yeah. time. Like three hours is cool. And then um like the educate like the major was good and then uh, I'm not gonna get into numbers of scholarship money and stuff okay. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But this way, it was a very good financial <laughs> fit. It was, yeah, it was, it was a good offer. Very, yeah. very good, very good financial fit. That's good. So, 
Um, then my mom was there with me. And that, was, that was the first visit my mom ever went on. Because it was okay. just me and my dad because my mom got to work. Gotcha. So it was me and my dad. So we went there and then with my mom. And she just loved everything. Yeah. Like coaching gotcha. staff. Everything was great. Just loved it. Gotcha. So then I left there. Shoot, I, I wanted to go there. Gotcha. So then it was between Vanderbilt and Carolina. And then from my mindset, it was like, you know, Vanderbilt's financial commitment to me wasn't as high as Carolina's. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just go to the school that wants me more. Yeah. Well, was Carolina. Let, me, let me ask this. For, for obviously, kind of talking about recruiting, um, do – when you look at other sports like football, I was like playing time and stuff is important. Did, does, does stuff like that really ever factor? Because, you know, I've, I've got some guys now that – I'm not going to name any names. But, you know, guys go through fall – Ball, and then you know get cut and like kind of like you mentioned guys want to go to their dream school <coughs> instead of going to like the best school that's the fit the best fit for them yeah and then when they make it through fall so do you factor kind of all that into it or do you just kind of be like the financial fit was good and i love the campus mm-hmm. and so i want to go like do you think about like the roster already how it's how it's constructed and well, in current times people are committing in ninth grade yeah yeah i committed ninth grade I, i'm not gonna say it's a problem but i'm saying okay. like you you don't know like, yeah. like when you commit yeah. that early you don't know Right, they have a rule in softball where they can't commit till junior year. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying you make that change. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is just like it's impossible to know when you're committing that early. Yeah. True. Like I didn't even know. Like, I was just going there because I love the school and I love the environment and I love the coaches and that. So that's that's really the reason why I went. I didn't think about playing time when I went. When you when you get there, like, I mean, you gotta work. You yeah. gotta do what yeah, you yeah. do, you gotta handle your business, do what you need to do. So it's like you don't know unless you commit junior, senior year. You gotcha. Uh, you just, it's impossible to know. Gotcha. So. And, and I, another thing about recruiting, like, you don't you don't see it a lot, but, like, football, you know, you see everybody flipping. You know what I'm saying? You get the, you get the signing day, and it's like, mm-hmm. kids been committed to this school for forever. You don't see that a lot with baseball. Well, I, I guess you see it a little bit, but I guess for you, was, was it was it kind of important to kind of honor your commitment once you, once you kind of committed there? Or once again, was it just something where you just kind of, you just kind of stayed with them because well, that – well, uh, it's like it's different, right? The coast, the East Coast and West Coast are different when it comes to recruitment, mm-hmm. right? East Coast, as soon as you commit, other coaches are done recruiting you. Okay, okay. And that, that's gotcha. for everybody. Yeah. Like, that, like you can ask anybody from Georgia, Florida. As soon as you commit, you're you're not getting any attention from any other coach. Okay. On the West Coast, they do that on the West Coast though. On the West Coast, they try to poach you from other schools. Gotcha. I've heard from other people that like like USC. Like I had a lot of friends that commit to USC, go to UCLA. Like, and that doesn't happen. Here. Okay. Like, you you commit to Georgia here. Georgia Tech ain't looking at you anymore. They still, yeah, I got like, you. It's like a courtesy oh. thing. Gotcha. So like, is, they they don't. If you're from the south or southeast or anywhere in the eastern side of the U.S., there's a li- very there's a slim, very slim chance you're gonna get recruited as soon as you after you commit. Okay. Very slim. Makes sense. Okay. Um, let's see what else I got to ask you. So cool thing was, so obviously you were freshman, finished up your freshman year this past year, right? Um, so talk us a little bit about. So you started off your freshman year. What a, what, a, what a pretty impressive, you probably already know where I'm going, but you start off yeah. with a pretty pretty impressive feat. Like, people don't even do that. You know, seniors, juniors don't do it. So kind of talk to us about, you know, getting, starting college ball and kind of how that, how that went for you starting off. Uh, college ball, you mean like the fall or like the, the actual like season? The season. So like The season. Well, the season, man, it was a roller coaster for me, I'll okay. be honest. So, like, in the beginning, like it was I was rolling. Yeah, like, yeah. I think yeah. 20 games in, I was batting like 450. Yeah. Like I like we played our rival Clemson. I went like eight for like eleven, eight Jeez. for thirteen. Like I was freshman, she's freshman of the week. Okay. Like number two hit on the team was freshman. Yeah. Going, going, I was like, ooh, I was the man. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm thinking I can do no wrong. Yeah. Right. And then hit SEC play first SEC series. We play uh, Tennessee. Okay. Lo and behold, <laughs> but, but this was before like they were Tennessee, Tennessee. This okay. is like they were like the number nine team or eight team in the country at the time. That's right. But like, everybody knew like their pitchers, none of their, all their pitchers had sub two ERAs. Yeah. They all like nine and zero. Oh. We're like, okay, wow. Said I go in there. What, what do you, you know? Look up. Look at the scoreboard. Sunday night. Sunday night guy has a no hitter going into eight. Okay. I'm zero for twelve in the series with like seven Ks. Dang. And I'm like, dang. What am I doing wrong? They, they, they only threw me one fastball the whole weekend. I'm like, sheesh. I, look, I took a deep breath. I'm like, wow. I'm very frustrated right now. Yeah. So then that led into a whole cycle of, like, me trying to figure out what I need to do, like, with stride, a whole lot of other stuff. And I'm like, you know, I went through a – I went 442 four after that. 
Oh wow! After yeah. the Tennessee series, yeah, no, no, no. Tennessee series started it. Okay. Right? Like that, I went four forty two in that span. Like that to like I think we only played like UGA or something. Okay, and that and that was like a three four week span where I just sucked. Dang. I was like bad, okay. like, terrible, like and like. Me as a player, like and even as a teammate, I kind of went down a little bit too because I was very frustrated. Like you know, I'd never like you think about it, when you, especially when you get to college. I ain't never, I've never went four for sixteen oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I've, I've, I won't say dominated, but I've performed at every level I've been at. Yeah. Like I can count on my hands how many times I went to a PG tournament and batted below three hundred. Like yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like. You, you never do that. Yeah. And another thing, like, young kids have to learn is that, like, you have to learn how to handle failure. And I thought I could. Mm. Going into it, I'm like, look, I've went over three before. Yeah. You yeah. know, I've been over four with three Ks before. I can handle failure. You know, I, I've I've got cut from teams before, but it, it really was a learning experience for me because I've never had sustained failure. Yeah. Okay. Where, like, it feel like you will never get out of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, having that and handling it and handling it in the way I handled it last year, I learned that, like, I had to grow up. And I had to like know that look, it's gonna happen, but it's gonna keep happening if you don't do what you need to do to improve and just keep thinking you're the man. Gotcha. Right? Because when you keep thinking you're the man, you're gonna perform like the man. Yeah. So mm-hmm. how did you handle it? What are some tips you can give some kids? Well, I didn't handle it well last year. I'll tell you that for a fact. Like I didn't handle it well until like after I got through it. Then I was like, okay, you know, I gotta change it. But what you gotta do is you gotta just think like, man, I'm still, I'm still the man. Yeah. I, I, I watched a video where Ricky Henderson, right? Everybody knows he's very flamboyant, very, you know, out there, right? He said, uh, he not him, but a guy that was playing against him said he heard Ricky strike out and then come back to the dugout and say, Ricky's still the man. Ricky's still great. <laughs> yeah, Ricky's still great. So then, like, stuff like that, right? Not to that extreme, maybe, yeah. but, like, that sounds ridiculous. But it's like you have to tell yourself that, tell yourself that mentally. Mm-hmm. And when you do that and get in that state where, like, you can't, like you can't get taken down by anybody, even if what you do, yeah, then you'll be successful. Or the most successful in baseball. Okay. So yeah. So so obviously, like I said, so it's it's one of those things where I think baseball is probably one of the probably the only sport where like you go through so many like it's it's a roller coaster. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like literally, like yeah. I said, you start off was it was it a 16 game hit streak to start to start off? Oh here? yeah. Like, so like I, you started. Like I, said, off. I, was, I was the man. That's crazy. I, have to be, I was the man. That's going crazy. Into it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So then, then you go through the little roller coaster. And I did. Did you pick it back up after the slump? Did it kind of come back up? I mean, or? yeah. I mean, put it this way. I had a chance because my bad numbers lowered to like two seventy five at one point. I was batting four twenty in the beginning, okay. going into SEC, and then I was, then I was like four seventy five. Then I raised it back up to like two ninety five. Went into the last series in Florida. Okay. So I was like, okay, I can die. still get a three hundred. Still get a three hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. Didn't, didn't hit good against Florida. Out. So then okay. I was like, dang. I finished the season at 284. Okay. I was like, ah, not, not terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> it was freshman year. But, you know, I definitely could have. Like, honestly, I believe if I would have had a good mental state last year, I probably would have hit, like, 330. Okay. I, I honestly believe that. Like, like because the way I started, like, if I just would have hit 260 in the SEC, I would have yeah. hit, like, 210 in the SEC. But, like, if I would have hit, like, 260, I would have batted 330. Yeah. So it's like, dang. Okay. You know, I had the potential to do that. I just had to mentally, like, prepare mentally. myself. But, you know, freshman ups and downs, it just happens. Yeah. So. So would you would you would you say that obviously you play you know Astros so you've been on on that summer ball circuit you've seen good arms yeah. would you say mental is probably the biggest thing that kind of keeps people because like I said you you see a lot of the guys you see in the SEC you probably saw them over the summer oh, like, it's, you, you already it's faced way them. different it's way different for real it's way different. Like Chase okay. Burns is way better for real now than he was in high school okay so I guess they're, they're just getting better coaching and, and oh they're bigger stronger like gotcha. just older more mature yeah like I mean Chase Burns got blessed because he had to face their lineup in the fall ball. Uh, right? so and yeah, after you're done facing their lineup, you're like, yeah. I mean, you can face anybody. Uh, your lineup ain't nothing. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, we had we had what three first rounders in our in our top nine, and then the other guys they all hit 15 homers plus. Like, I mean, you can't really do anything about that. You're like, gotcha. okay, I mean, you just you know, he's like the Alabama football effect. Yeah, you go against dogs, you get better. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. But yeah. like the dogs will turn you to it until you get an alpha. Exactly. And then you then you you know you're him. So it's like. You have to uh, wait. What was the question? I totally forgot. I, I oh, the so. middle state. Yeah, middle state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Middle state is definitely, definitely important. It's definitely right. important. Like when you fail, but yeah. it's it's definitely like because baseball is. I had someone tell me Barry Larkin. I think told me he was because I trained with him one time with CJ. One time, right. but Barry Larkin said it's 100 percent mental and 100 percent physical the game of baseball. Mm. Right. Think about it. it's not 50 50. 100 percent. 100 percent. Both ways. Yeah, because like you could be 100 percent physically. If you're not 100 percent mentally, then no, you're not gonna man. hit good. And if you're 100 percent mentally, you're not 100 percent physically, you're not gonna perform at your best. So, it's okay. like you have to be great in both. In both. Yeah. Okay. 
One one question that I that I kind of am, I'm always intrigued to know. So obviously, I'm biased. I'm I'm, I'm from Birmingham. I'm a Bama guy. So okay. I feel like it's probably no debate. SEC got the best baseball. Oh, 100%. okay. <laughs> so even like the preseason right now, I think there's six teams in the top ten. It, it's it's yes. Yeah, I won't entertain any debate. It's <laughs> wild. Yeah, SEC <laughs> baseball is the best. Hands down. Not, close the book. You can't debate me. Okay. I, I, I Seriously, with yeah. anybody. <laughs> so tell me about obviously playing in the SEC East. Were there any like freshman year? How does like how does like a road trip look like? Were there any obviously people hear about like football LSU fans or wild Bama? You know, does baseball kind of get like that as well? Or how does, I mean, how does that? It depends on the school, okay. right? Because like this year is going to be way different because we play uh, Mississippi State and Arkansas and they're on the road? way yeah on the road and then they're Arkansas's and they're way good. more and, well, and we play LSU at home. Okay, you got them at home. Okay, yeah, okay. but like I'd say, for example, like we played Texas last year. Their fans travel. For real, okay. All the way to Carolina. So I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> and I was like, sheesh. Like they didn't home run. They'd go out to the stand to take the helmet off and do this. So it's like, I'm so like, it felt like, okay. So yeah, travel, so yeah. yeah, we beat them, of course. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so um, that and uh, it's like it depends on the on the uh, team that you're playing. Okay. Because like different teams are different fan bases. Gotcha. Right, like Florida. They have a more of an older demographic fan base. Like their fan base, you go to their games, like this more like older people, you know, okay. little, little enjoying the game of baseball, just yeah, watching just it casually. Okay. Like, but then if you play for like if you play for like like LSU, their mm-hmm. fans are more rowdy. Yeah. They'll travel more, and then they'll like okay, they care about it more. Yeah. And and it, not not I don't say I don't mean to say care about it more, but they they care about it in a different way. Gotcha. Than like a like a Florida or a. You know, UGA fan, like UGA fans are more like just chill watching the game. Okay. Like they love watching yeah. the Bulldogs, but they're not going to be yelling the same way yeah. and heckling the players the same yeah. way Tennessee fans are. Yeah, and that's what I asked you. So, like, like do y'all, do, like, do you experience that? Obviously, like, oh, like, oh, yes. For like, real? Okay. Especially when we play Tennessee because they were like, because I, I was hot too, so people knew who I was going into there. <laughs> uh, so, they was like, number seven going for 7K. <laughs> You're going to strike out again. <laughs> I was like, she's like, I was like, I mean, dang, it was, it was tough. Yeah. But so like, yeah, they'll do it. You just yeah. gotta, you gotta know how to. And I guess the, the, the crazy thing about baseball too is like, I, I was being an umpire. You with the fans being so close, you can hear pretty much everything. Oh, especially you know like, yeah, behind yeah. the plate, you can, <laughs> you you hear it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it depends on the park, yeah, because uh-huh. Tennessee's the worst because their yeah. fans are literally like right on exactly. Like, yeah. you, you can you can reach your hand out, yeah, touch them. and like and it's a bowl shape. Stadium. Yeah, I mean, it's the size of Cooperstown, but it's coming for another day. <laughs> but um, yeah. So like I said, it's it's like it's a bowl, and like their fans just all up on you. It's it's crazy. So. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so let me see. Talk about now. You did a little bit of pitching. Is is that something you think you still gonna be doing? A little uh, bit not of? as much this year. Like, okay. I pitched more last year out of necessity because uh, we had a lot of pitching injuries last year. Ah, so gotcha, this year gotcha. I'm gonna be more position. What position? Okay. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Justine, what you got for Yeah, me? let's talk yeah, about college yeah. life a little yeah. bit. Yeah, all right. What's up? College life. So is the work-life balance what you thought it would be as a student athlete? Uh, surprisingly, it's kind of better than I thought. Okay. Depending on your major, obviously. You can't yeah. be an engineering major talking about school's easy. But yeah. it's like I'm a major retail major right now. Okay. So it's like it's very – it's it's just – it's all on you, really, time management. Right, it's not like I'm having to write 15 papers a week or anything. It's just like you got to make sure you remember what to do and when to do it. Yeah. By the time you do it, especially yeah. now because COVID happened and everybody has online classes. Like, like I don't think it's ever been easier right. than, than it is now, especially with online and the ways you can utilize, you know, online right. sources and stuff like that. So, yeah. it's like school is hard, but it's not like. Oh my God, I can't do it hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's probably like a little mixture of that. Yeah. And I think the good thing with being a college athlete is they try to set you up for success with like tutors and study hall and things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that kind of stuff helps you? Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Like, I only actually do work um, in study hall. Yeah. I I feel like when I do it in. When I do it back in my room, I just don't have the same yeah. uh, passion to do it. Yeah. So when I'm in an environment where everybody's doing it, I feel more motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do you have? Do you find that you have any free time? Like, what do you? What do you do in your free time? Uh, you have free. You definitely have free time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, more on off days than any other days, obviously. But you know, I mean, a schedule for a day. Like, I'll give you a brief schedule, like our brief like rundown of like a day. Yeah, yeah. probably right. Yeah. I mean. Depending on what class you are, like say you have a let's say from like this is what I had. I had a nine fifty five class, like a ten. No, no, take it back. Ten oh five class and a eleven forty class. Mm-hmm. I had those two classes. So you'd wake up, get breakfast, 
South Carolina has like a little refueling station right below our my dorm that I stay at. And um, so you can go get a protein shake or you know get some food. They make food for you, stuff like that. So you do that, get a food, then you go to class, right? And then practice starts at 2. So, so right after class, I have to hurry up and go to the Doty and grab lunch. Because, you know, if you go there without eating, I'm going to lose weight. I'm gonna gain weight. <laughs> so I, I have to grab lunch. And usually, you know, that gets me at the field at like 1.30, 1.40. My teammates don't like that. But, I mean, they have to deal with it. I didn't have a car at the time. <laughs> but um, so – I'd get there, so I'd be there, practice at 2. The practice is probably from 2 to, let's say, 5. Okay. Or maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have. Like, 2 to 5, you know, and some change. So we'll do that, and then, you know, you either go to study hall mm-hmm. or, you know, you do classwork, and then you have the rest of the issue yourself. So whatever you do after that, that's on you. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. So, like, that's basically a day. So we have a little bit of free time after we're yeah. done with everything, yeah. at least from my perspective. So, I mean, yeah, so we have a little bit of free time. Yeah. What do you like to do? Do you go to other sporting events? Do you go? I mean, yeah. So in the beginning, like, I, we used to go to, like, girls' soccer games. Mm-hmm. Those are, like, we would play Clemson and stuff like that. I would go to soccer games, volleyball games sometimes. Not this year. It's because, you know, I was doing something this year. So, uh, like, that and everything. So, the, mo- the most things we probably go to is football games. Yeah, you know, obviously, yeah, yeah. SEC school, you have to go to the football game. Yeah. Got to be there. Got to yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we saw recently on your Instagram that you had pledged Kappa. Yes. So neither Willie or I are Greek. Okay. What went into that decision to join Greek life? Uh, well, I've, you know, been so caught up in baseball. I've never really looked up at, like, the other side of, like, li- of, like college, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I, and I, and I've always wanted to... You know, I feel like I've I've always wanted to give back to the community and do stuff like that because that's yeah. the main point of of Cap Alpha Cyber Fraternity Incorporated. It's it's achievement and also like service in the public's interest. So yeah. we we provide service like community service, like doing helping people with things like you know charity work stuff like that. So I want to do that as well. Mm-hmm. And you know that was the best that was the best uh, fraternity for me to do, and you know, I knocked it down. So yeah, uh-huh. yeah good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Couple more questions for we before we kind of wrap up. Um, we sit now. This is it seems like when we have a conversation and you look up, it's like it's been an hour almost. That's good. Yeah. Um. So can you can you talk a little bit just about going back to South Carolina? Like, how is the outlook for this season? Um. Obviously, they just they just recently within the past month or two dropped the um the preseason ranking. So can you talk about a little bit about the season and kind of how y'all looking and and kind of some stuff you're looking forward to for this season and. Can you just kind of touch on that? I think we're looking really good. Yep. You know, definitely way better than last year, just given off the fact that we have a lot of transfer guys, yep. you know, a lot of older guys, you know. Um, pitching is looking great. That's good. I'm so, I mean, I, I think we're making we're going to make a pretty good run this year, if I'm right. being perfectly honest. And I'm just looking forward to, you know, second year on the job. You yeah, know, like, yeah. you know you know what to expect, you know, and uh, hopefully get opportunity to, you know, prove myself to myself that last year was, wasn't was really, you know, it was a freshman experience, and that's going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just looking forward to that and, you know, uh, making things happen on the field and, you know, on and off the field. So, gotcha. yeah. And then I got I have one last question. I'll let kind of just name kind of close it up. So in, in, in our intro episode, we had talked about possibly starting an arena baseball league. And and one of the I guess kind of new rules we had thought about was. <laughs> so I don't, how many times did you get hit by pitch this year? Was it was it zero? Hit, oh, you didn't get hit at all? Yeah. My team is kind of get we're like. That's crazy. Because like. I mean, I didn't have that many chances to avoid a pitch, but I, okay. I, I mean, I don't. I just go. That's natural. And like when a pitch, when a pitch comes at me, I'm, I'm, I'm just. You get up. I, I flinch, and then when I flinch, it just like it's it just messes you. Okay. You know, so. so one thing we had talked about was like, so what if? Imagine a world where you know, even in the SEC, college ball, pro ball, you're seeing ninety plus, sometimes okay. ninety five plus. So imagine you're in a box, you get hit by a pitch, you know, like ah, the initial hurt. So we were like, what if we allowed the pitcher and the batter to like box for like fifteen seconds? Like 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 in hockey? Quick, <laughs> like 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 in hockey that it's not frowned upon, but I'm like, you know, pitcher hits you at ninety five, I need to be able to get my lick back. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, what if we they just allowed we bring out some lightweight gloves, quick little fifteen second in the pitcher's mound, Man, just get to go at it. With, uh, pitchers would be destroyed. They'd be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like pitchers would not. Respectfully, respectfully. I know a lot of. I I know a lot of big swole pitches, so I'm not gonna say every single one of them. Okay, but I mean, you beating up Mike Trout? No, no, no. You beating up your Don Alvarez? No, not at all. I mean, (laughs) I just feel like. So like, I mean, like, if you're coming up, I mean, if you're a skinny pitcher, don't do that. 
Just don't do it. Like, like if you're one of the pitchers that like isn't as physical as like the other, like if you're not put his way, if you're not one eighty five plus, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. I just feel like that would add so much add so much value to like because you know once again we talk about baseball like. I, I don't want to say we got to make baseball fun again because it's a very fun. Like if you understand the sport and just the complexity of it, and like the beautiful, it's a beautiful game, right? If we make the game just as bland and as respectful, like if you watch a baseball and basketball, if you watch a basketball and football game, when you get dunked on, they stare you down like you crazy. Yeah, head tap, like head tap, <laughs> the whole crowd doing it, like 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 that's crazy. And then in football, you get truck, everybody looking at you like you know you look buffing up and stuff like yeah. that, that. That's that's appreciated in sports that are black dominated. Like it's just how that's it true. is because yeah. we're like it's more entertaining to watch. Yeah. But then when you go to a sport that's all about respect and all about unwritten rules, like. Dog. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Like, you're not going to get a kid. It's already boring enough, because uh, I'll be fully honest. I can understand why kids bored watching baseball. It's nine innings, three, four hours, you know, watching a pitcher throw a ball into a glove, you know. Um, like, it can be boring sometimes. Yeah. And you're just, you're just adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. If you just do, if you do stuff like that. So I it's agree. like, just stop. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like you got to let these guys that have personalities be per- be show them. Yeah. Show their personality. And it's not everyone, but it's you crazy. need a little bit of flash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and I, obviously there's levels to it, right? I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying go out there and, you know, do like do some crazy stuff. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, there's levels to it. Yeah. Like, there is a respect level to it. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be everything has to be about respect. Yeah. And like, like when I bat flip, when Jose Bautista bat flipped and he did that, why are we fighting him? Exactly. He just hit a three-run homer. In the AL with DS, yeah, 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 yeah. To take the lead, and you and you're mad at him because he yeah. bat flip. Like, what yeah. are we doing? It was a bat flip. That was one of the like, like most Tim an- Tim an- Tim Anderson hit a bomb, yeah. chopped threw it down, and did it at his own team. He didn't do it at the other team. Yeah, he did like let's go to his own team, and, they and people are mad. Yeah. For what? I can see, if he, like, yeah, like, you're not going to bat flip and throw it into their dugout. Like, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, oh my god, oh no, Tim Anderson, don't show emotion after you hit a good home run. Like, yeah. what? That's basically saying you want, want you to be a robot, hit the home run. Run on the bases. Run on the bases yeah. and you're good. Like yeah. no, that's not that's not conducive to good to uh, entertaining product. This yeah. is not. And like I said, every other sport, even soccer, you people score gold. They taking their shirt off. They're mm-hmm. celebrating. Me. Even not NFL, you know, they've let them do the team celebration. Yeah. But like you said, you made a good point. Basketball, they get dunked on. You got celebration. Hockey, they're fighting. Like they're you know everyone's mm-hmm. energetic. And like I said, it's almost like when you think about baseball. People want us to control yeah. emotions, like I said, and be robot. They just yeah, want us to be robot. Get a double, no double celebration. Yeah, none of that. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for advocating. Hey, if you get a single, celebrate on that. Like, if you get yeah. on base, because like I said, you know, as a hitter, like I said, you went through a slump. Like, we don't, you don't often get on base. You might bat, you know, if you bat 300 in the MLB career, like that's pretty, that's very good. So three out of ten at bats, you're getting on base. So if you get a single. I need to celebrate. Wait, wait, you know? but obviously, there's levels to it, like I've said earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be up by or down by 15 and you bat for There's yeah. levels to it, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying just unleash the, an, the full animal, but I'm saying, like, just be more accepting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like swing 3 0 in, in a position players, in a position players pitching and you swing. Are you kidding me? You're talking about you disrespecting the game by swing 3 0. You disrespect the game by having a position player exactly, pitch. Exactly, pitching, exactly. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? Like, yeah. th- that's ridiculous to me. Yeah, I remember, I remember what the, that big thing with Tatis when he swung through, hit the grand slam. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but but guess what? If you would have took that pitch and they would have came back in the next inning, everybody would have been like, oh, they just couldn't capitalize. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like really? Yeah, like, why, like, some why? people are just, yeah. they worry about the wrong stuff. Like, like, they, like, why are you worried about that? Yeah. For what? We, we got to make, ba- like I said, I, I, I hate using the term. We're not, so we're, not having to, yeah, we're not having to make it fun again because it's fun. But like I said, I like, like what you said, you got to, we got to need to be more accepting of just people that want to express themselves. Yeah. Let them express. Well, yeah, I, I think know. with this new generation coming up, though, I think, I think it's, it's going to be, be great because like being with like, some of these high school kids and stuff, I think if, if some of these guys make it to the big leagues and actually become stars. It's going to be good. Like, especially with the Af- African-American uh, wave coming in because yeah. there's been more African American players, great players coming in college and especially through high school yeah. these last couple of years that has been unprecedented. It's been good since like the 1980s. Yeah, so like it, it's coming. Yeah, so it when is, it does yeah. come, it's I feel like Dion right now. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> coming. We coming. <laughs> we coming. We coming. <laughs> we coming. <laughs> coming right. Now, yeah, so. we're bringing our baggage oh, and yeah. it's Louis. <laughs> he did so, say that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's Louis. So I mean, we're coming. So <laughs> like I said, it, it's uh. When it happens, though, it's going to be a big move. It's going to be good. All right. Cool, cool.
Christine, what you got for us? Yeah, so I think we're ready to wrap it up. Michael, thank you so much yeah, for thank joining y'all for having us me on, on me Glizzies on. and Ground Balls. If you want another Glizzy, feel free. We got some Glizzies. <laughs> we got some Glizzies. Hey, what, before we, 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 we didn't ask the question. No, no, no. I'm, I'm you better ask it. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, my fault. Yeah. I thought you were going to end it no, no, without. No, no. Oh, you no, got no, it. No. Go ahead. No, just before we go, um, we like to kind of leave our audience with some advice, some yeah. positivity, some motivation. Um, tell us for this next year, you said it's your second year on the job. Mm-hmm. What are your goals? What are you focusing on? What's going to be different about this year than last year? Uh, well, my goals, like not statistical, but like from uh, just uh, physical, mental, I have to get stronger. I got to mm-hmm. get stronger. Mm-hmm. But mentally, just know that, you know, I, I have the ability to be great. Yeah. And it's, in, it's, it's all on me. That yeah. I have the control, right? If, if I go over three, who cares? I still have the, I still have the ability to be great. Yeah. And if you, if you have the self-confidence and the, you know, like I said, in work ethic builds confidence, but it's a corner of convo. But like, if you have the self confidence in order to, you know, believe you're the man and you can help your team win, and you believe that you're the best player that you could possibly be, or going into it, then you know the outcome won't really matter as much as it would if you're not really secure in the fact that you're a good player. Mm-hmm. So you just have to be, you know, confident in yourself, and you know, believe that. You are the man, no matter what happens, and no matter how many over threes you have, and just do that. And that's my goal for the season to remember keep that yeah. mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. All about confidence. I love yeah. that. So, I guess other than that, you you know, you talked about being confident. What is one other piece of advice that you could give, maybe a younger athlete mm-hmm. who's looking or wanting or ha- has dreams of becoming a Division One, okay. SEC, mm-hmm. Power Five, whatever right. baseball player? I'm looking at the camera for this. Okay. Oh, I like that. He's going to turn around a little bit. Young kids, don't go to showcases unless you have something to showcase. That's that's, that's powerful. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. Don't go to showcases if you don't have anything to showcase. That's it? That's it. (laughs) I like it. It's it's that simple because people complain, PG's taking money. They ain't taking your money. Yeah. You giving them the money. Yeah. Because I'm, like, I'm telling you right now, no one with common sense in the travel ball world that knows what they're doing has a kid that throws, who's a, a freshman in high school who wants to get committed, who throws 75 from the NCAA, <laughs> runs a 7-5, t- takes tra- bad BP. You think you you think you're just going to put a PG shirt on and you're going to get an offer? Yeah, it don't work like that. Like, no, you have to put in the work, yeah. man. Like, like, you have to understand that, like, you're not entitled to – uh, offer just because you go to a showcase. Yeah, you're not you're not entitled to a PGL America spot because you hit 400 at a tournament. Yeah, you're not. You're not entitled to anything, right? What what I give what I would say to young kids is like, look, man, be work on yourself. Get physical. Yeah, like if you if you want to if you want to be D one, th- you have to give them a reason to make you D one, right? You can't be average. Yeah, you can't. It's true because. I don't know the percentage, but I'm pretty sure there's like a below a five percent of baseball players in America go SEC, ACC, Power Five. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, it's, it's not. Like, think about all the baseball players; it's, it's not a high percentage. Like, like, it's, like, like all these people that you're complaining about online, throwing hard, and you know, control matters. They're going D one. You're not. Yeah. So why don't you do what? Not once they do exactly what they do, but don't be like antagonistic towards people like that. Yeah. Oh, I That's see it, it on Twitter all the time, and it just be, it, hey, makes me so mad. Don't go to showcases. If you have nothing don't to show. have it. That's, that's powerful right there. Like, 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 dude, like, why? Yeah. Like, there's no point to it. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time, because I, 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 like like I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> don't go to showcases if you have nothing to showcase. Because I'm have. telling you right now, because if you go to the showcase and you have nothing to showcase... They will not showcase you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting posted on PG Twitter. You're not going. You're None not going that. on PG Twitter. <laughs> Jeremy Brown's not making no post about you. I'm telling you right now. You're not. You're not going to be on any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, like it's just not. You, you hit a bloop single or the first baseman hit does not mean you have a hit tool. <laughs> it doesn't. Tell him, Mike. Tell him. If you if, if you perfectly square up a ball and that, and it's a warning track ball, don't go to a showcase. Yeah. Just don't, man. It's a waste of time. Don't do it. And also another thing, this is actually not antagonistic to a job. I, I had to get out of my chest. I <laughs> yeah, but, you, but another thing that's very important for me is if you want to go SCC, ACC, showcases aren't the best way to go, personally, from my perspective. Right? Because when I was getting offers, I didn't go to showcase to get offers. Yeah. I went to camps. Okay. Like you go to camps, go to the places where you know the coaches are going to be at. 
Yeah, exactly. For a fact. You don't know if you go to a tournament. Okay, if you're, like, not on a Canes National East Cobb Astros or, yeah, or you're yeah. not a high-ranked player, like, no one, no one's going to know who you are. True. So you have to get lucky and hope and, and, and pray that a top-ranked player that coaches are looking at, you're playing against them, and, and, you, and you. you happen to play good, yeah. then you get, no, don't do that. Go to the places where you know the coaches are at, and you can shake their hand. You, you can shake their hand because I went to Vanderbilt camp. That's where I got my offer. I it, it was it was a camp. It wasn't even like a recruit camp. Yeah, it was like just any camp. I was like, okay, I went to the cheapest camp I could find. Okay, we we stayed at Vanderbilt in their dorms for like three days. Yeah, right. And I went to the camp, pitched my butt off, like fielded my butt off, hit really well. Coach Corbin shook hands with Corbin. Three days later, had an offer. Oh wow, that type of thing. That's good. Right. So like, do that. Get. See the coaches face to face and do that, and you'll be all right. I like that, and and just make sure that's fine. I like so, that. Yeah. So yeah. no showcases, and like I said, like hey, this man knows. Like I said, he's he's in the SEC, yeah, like played in the SEC, started like you know, so he he's got some knowledge. It, it, like we don't just have some random person up here trying to tell you information. Like like I said, you've you've lived that process. So, um, Mike, I, like I said, we've been on here. This is crazy. It's been on here for an hour. It has, it, has it felt like an hour? Uh, I, I like talking. So yeah, 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 I, I like talking. That's so. a good thing. Yeah. So man, like we definitely um like I said, good luck on this upcoming year. Like I said, I obviously I'm a Bama guy, but we definitely gonna be following the Gamecocks, man. Rooting you on. Like I said, hopefully we see y'all in Omaha. That'd be dope. Because if you make it to Omaha, I'm gonna be out there. I like I gotta go to Omaha. So I'm hoping y'all make it out there. Yeah. But um definitely good luck on the season. Like I said, and, and I know we'll probably try to have you on another time. Justine, you got anything in, in closing that you want to add on? Thank you so much for right. joining thank us. Y'all this for having is a me good on. conversation. Oh, yeah. Once again, thank y'all for tuning in this episode of the Glizzies and Ground Balls podcast. Sure. We'll catch y'all next time. Thank y'all. Yeah.